Governors of southern Nigeria ban open grazing in all 17 states following meeting in Asaba. An independent journalist publishes his investigation into the killing of Miobong Warren and why it seems authorities are helping the major suspect escape justice. Manchester City become English Premier League thanks to Leicester City's bidding of Manchester United yesterday. It's World Facilities Management Day with the theme Standing Tall Beyond the Pandemic. We'll be discussing the importance of keeping your facilities in top shape. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's another very beautiful, uh, bright Wednesday morning. And I was uh, having a conversation this morning about why we're having, uh, you know, shorter nights and longer days. You know, mm. it's, it's as bright as early as 6.10. Like, what's going on? No, really, <laughs> I remember my surprise stepping out of the house and asking why. Why is it so Yeah, so I think it's, it's that period, you know, it's that period of the year where, you know, the nights are shorter, the days are longer. Um, well, good morning once again. I am Osaogi Ogboa. And I am Annette Felix saying congratulations to all the fans of Manchester City. You guys have now, you know, made it to the final, basically, champions now. And uh, I remember talking to a friend this morning about it, about how, you know, Chelsea... You know, the whole thing that happened over the weekend, how Chelsea, you know, um, basically lost. And uh, he said that was very surprising to him. I was like, let's focus on the good news, which is Manchester well, City winning. Well, um, yeah, they've won the league for, you know, the 20, 2021 season. Um, congratulations to them. I really don't care about them that much. Um, <laughs> I'm mostly concerned about Manchester United losing yesterday. Uh, to Leicester City, embarrassing. You know, but I understand that um, you know very likely the coach wanted to uh, save players for the Liverpool game, which it, we, for him is a bigger game. Um, the Liverpool game was postponed. You know, after fans um, you know stormed the pitch and um, you know disrupted that game. You know, but um, Manchester City um, have had a very very good run this season. Yes, they've been able to keep it together all through the season. They've been able to maintain the tempo, you know, taking it off uh, Liverpool. At first, you know, when the season started, there was a lot of speculation about who, you know, will make the top four this season, who will eventually get to the, t um, you know, um, you know, the uh, to win. Um, at first, of course, there was, you know, expectations that maybe Liverpool will be able to keep it going, you know, and win it for another season, but it didn't turn out that way. So. Congratulations to, um, you know, the uh, citizens, as they are popularly called. Um, and, of course, for every other person who's struggling to make it into the top four, I wish you good luck. Yes. Um, so, um, we just showed a, a video there of a uh, Man City uh, coach, Pep Guardiola. Yeah. He's been speaking about how excited he is, you know, saying this is a relief for them. It's a massive achievement for the club. We know how he's basically been winning since, you know, 2016 domestic matches and all of that. So, yes, looking forward to um, how, how he runs with uh, Man Manchester United, right? Yeah. We know Man City is now about 10 points ahead of Man U right now. So, yes, all the sports detail there. Catch up with us at Plus TV Africa on all our social media platforms. Absolutely. For the updates. I'm, I'm really also, you know, as a Manchester United fan, hoping that, you know, we're able to maintain that uh, second position. Uh, losing yesterday didn't feel good. Um, and, you know, mostly, you know, just for bragging rights. So, because it's, it's, you know, pretty much confirmed that, you know, Man U, Manchester City will, you know, be at, in, in the Champions League. Well, you know, you know, you can Chelsea. be first. That's better than second. Yes, so it can, is. You can you always, know, but, you know, let's see what next is. You can always, you know. Let's see what next is. It, go it's, been a, it's been a good run for both, you know, for everybody who's on the top four right now. Um, it's been a pretty good, interesting run. Arsenal have had a really, really very, very embarrassing season. Um, but, you know, for Manchester United, hopefully, you know, they... I know, I'm very, very confident that they will maintain that second position until the end of the season. Just a couple of games left, two or three games left until the end of the season. Um, so, you know, with um, all the, you know, um, humility in me, I would say congratulations once again to Manchester City. Hopefully next season, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer would be able to do better and maybe win uh, the league. Um, but, of course, Chelsea and um, Man City still have a chance, and this is where Pep Guardiola's... Um, you know, might be able to do it, you know, make it a double this season mm -hmm. if he gets to win the Champions League on the 29th. Um, so Chelsea and Man City are in the Champions League finals. 
Um, everyone is, you know, fingers crossed waiting for the 29 to see how that plays out. If they get to win the Champions League, then it's a double for him this season. If not, then Chelsea gets to win also something really, really big uh, this season. That is the Champions League. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping Wally Scott will be able to, you know, speak a little bit about this and about the success of um, uh, the um, English Premier League, um, the success of uh, English teams, basically, in world football for 2021. Um, and, you know, there's that argument, once again, about which is the biggest league and the best league in the world. It's going to be the English, the German, the Spanish, the Italian league. Um, and every time, you know, it always seems to be the um, English uh, league. Mm. But we'll see. Also, um, regarding our top trending, we know that Ramadan fasting continues and uh, the Sultan of Sokoto announced yesterday, um, Saad Abubakar, about the sighting of the moon. He mentioned yesterday that, you know, if the moon wasn't sighted on Tuesday uh, 13th, that fasting will continue to Wednesday and, uh, you know, the... <clears throat> The moon was not sighted, and that means that you know Eid would become on the would, would happen on the on Thursday, and that would be on the thirteenth uh, of May, twenty twenty one. So yes, uh, well done to everyone fasting. Keep it up. You're doing fantastic, and just a few more hours before it's Eid El Fitri. Yes. I, so this this one I really don't you know know so much about you know and. Um, so when they talk about sighting of the moon, is it is, it, is there really a moon that is seen? You know, okay. do they? So um, I, I wish we had you know someone who is a Muslim faithful to do all the explaining. But I know that what happens is that they use the Muslim calendar, and yes. um, they have to sight the moon. And I feel I, I I want to believe that's a fiscal moon because you see um, you see Muslim faithfuls in in Saudi Arabia you know bringing out their chairs and um, looking through their telescope. You know, the yes, they, yes, they do that, and um, they want to. I, I think they call it the. They use different observatories in Saudi Arabia to see if the moon is out. You know, it's basically you know using the the, the using the moon, the Muslim calendar. It's all almost related to astrology, so to speak. You know, but like they said, the moon was not sighted on Tuesday, and that means if the moon had been sighted on Tuesday, that means it would have begun on Wednesday the 12th, but since it wasn't sighted on Tuesday, it will now become um, on Thursday, so like, May 13th. Did the moon like delay? Or? You would have to ask your Muslim friends <laughs> to do Muslim they, the, the Muslims use the lunar calendar, so that's where it all comes from. Um, but does the moon decide I'm tired today. It'll probably come out tomorrow. No, no, but you know, this so. also. You know, so, so this is another thing. You know, for Nigeria, um, there's um, meant to be public holidays uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So today actually is is a public holiday. So a lot of people aren't going to work this morning. That reminds me of why there wasn't any traffic uh, on the way to work yes, this morning. Yes, yes. So even um, though the Muslim, the the um, Eid had been declared, or Wednesday Thursday had been declared as you know the public holidays to celebrate Eid, but we know that the moon wasn't sighted on Tuesday. Okay. That means that fasting will continue today. So even though they had said Wednesday, Thursday, public holiday, we obviously know that this will happen. This would be a repetition of what happened in about 2015 when the moon was incited when they thought it would be, and that means that Friday would automatically, definitely become a public holiday as well. Well, it so has to Wednesday, be Thursday, Friday. So it has to be declared a public holiday by the Nigerian <laughs> government. Um, if not, then people are expected to be at work on Friday. No, because it's 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 a it's a, supposed to be a public holiday because it's a celebration. You know, of a, the end of a fasting period, so we, just the way you have um, um, the Christian holiday, like New Year or yeah. like no, Christmas. I, I'm just saying. I'm, so those days, you know, are, you know, kind of fixed. You know, you know, it's going to be on the 24th and 25th. You know, it's going to be on the 31st and the first. You know, but you know, so this one now, there's you know, been a little glitch here. The, the moon wasn't sighted. Yeah, not, they it's already, not a glitch. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> my you Muslim know, friends would beg to differ. It's not a glitch. <laughs> well, so so, but, but the government had already. Projected that it and that's why people started. have been mocking the government on, you know, on social media, saying the governments had already seen the moon ahead of time. Exactly. And, you know, being, so, being so, so, about so that. does the Minister of Interior now have to put out another statement saying the public holidays Maybe. will be Thursday and Maybe. Friday, or will be Wednesday all the way till Friday? Maybe, but everybody just knows that definitely would be Thursday and Friday. And if it wasn't cited today, so people should be at work today. Yes, but people. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's like already like a cheat day. So they have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Oof. You want to change religions? Unfor no, I mean, I'm just, <laughs> unfortunately, we don't get to experience public holidays. Yeah, so, we know, don't. There are lots of professions who don't get yeah. to experience public holidays. Yeah. As a journalist, for one, like when people are celebrating Christmas, I'm actually out there on the field saying, oh, it's Christmas Day. People are celebrating Christmas. 
We're here on the streets to find out how you're enjoying your day the only while holi we're working. <laughs> the, so. only, <laughs> the only holidays you get are when you go and leave. You know, that's, yeah. uh, that's what, you know. And what you'll get lots of calls when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the things we're going to be talking about today, let me just quickly run through them. Uh, the, of course, uh, story on Inyobong Umoren is not over. There has uh, been more revelations. There's been more of these conversations. Uh, journalist uh, David Hundain, who will be joining us today, uh, did, of course, a very, very... Um, exclusive, did a very fantastic job digging further into, um, you know, the cause of her death, you know, and the, the, the days surrounding her death and, of course, other people that might be connected to it. And it has opened a can of worms, if it can be described as that, um, with regards to the police force in um, Akwaibom State and other people that might be connected to the suspect, uh, Frank Ackman, I think that's his name. Um, and so it's one of the things that we're going to be talking about this morning um, on the program. So you don't, don't miss that conversation. Um, so you can get to, if you haven't seen the article and, um, um, and you know, you want to catch up on the investigations leading to her death, um, but of course, investigations surrounding her death, then you should, you know, wait for that interview. Um, my challenge really with all of this is, um, and it's one thing that I've always had a, you know, an issue with, um, a lot of times we have laws. We have laws, we have um, um, acts, you know, there's a police act, there's, you know, criminal justice, you know, law on, on some of all of that. But it, it, why do we always need to wait for, you know, public outcry for some of these things to just work? Um, if the person has been found, you know, to be guilty, he has been, okay, well, he hasn't gone to court yet, but if, if some of these investigations have been carried out, first of all, the, the crime scenes, one of the things that I'm going to be asking David, um, the crime scene, of course, has been contaminated, and it's, it, it's, it's one of the issues that we also have with our policing system. Um, the place where her body was allegedly found has already been contaminated with people walking in to take pictures and make videos and stuff like that. So you can't even use that in court anymore. So there is that. And then the conversation about, you know, the possibility of other um, shallow graves where other people, you know, may have been um, killed and buried also. That's also a part of this conversation, you know, in a crime scene that has been contaminated. Um, so there is that. So what exactly makes this investigation so slow? I mean, what, what exactly are we waiting for, you know, with the police, you know, to, you know, take, you know, him to court, to charge him with murder, to charge him with manslaughter, whatever it is. Why do we need to wait for all of this, you know, public, you know, push before some of these things are done? It should be a seamless process. It should be a, you know, this is, you know, what you have found. This is the evidence against you. This is your court date and, and, and case you know, just goes on. Oh, right. But so we need to wait for people like Dave, uh, David Hundeng and other you know, private investigators and journalists to continue to dig, 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 dig until there's, you know, this kind of worms that is open. Now it rubs off on many people in the police force. Now it also creates a huge speculation about um, um, human uh, trafficking and, of course, um, um, harvesting of, um, um, of, uh, of uh, body parts and some of all of that, um, which makes it, you know, a whole lot worse. The expectation from this investigation now, the expectation from what you know, David Unei has been able to put out now would be that the IG of police, the commission of police in, in, in that state will be on their feet to look deeper into this case, to not just push it away as an unfortunate incident where a girl was murdered, but to look deeper into it. So do we expect that some of that will play out or are we just going to, you know, you know, focus on other things that go on in Nigeria and sweep that under the rug until next time, you know, it, it's, it's trending on Twitter. Definitely. Um, it's, 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 important questions we need to ask. But yes, we'll get into uh, the meat of that conversation after uh, Off the Press. Do stay with us.